now that I'm done pressing all the buttons over there. Good Sweet. Lord. What is, what, what is up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to the Angry Nation podcast. Uh, yeah, I was getting the intro all screwed up. You guys won't even know what I did. That, hey, that up, backstage, hey, that, that backstage uh, music was killer, though, bro. Well, Seriously, I was there, getting into it. I just did my little well, dance, the whole thing. I was like, I was like, what the hell is that? What I don't even know what that is. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's cool yeah. countdown. Oh it was a cool uh, countdown. Yeah. I, I was gonna say I was kind of <laughs> nodding along too. Yeah. All right, it was, it was all right there for a minute. Uh, so as you guys can tell, this is another one of those pre-recorded ones because I'm currently in New Orleans. Uh, we finally finished moving Mel's mom in, and we're heading on tomorrow. But hmm. we've got T with us today. Good old reliable T. He's he shows up when the rest of them just won't. You so, know, thank there's you, winners and there's people that ain't winners. And there's everybody cool. else. <laughs> and then there's everybody else. You're good, you're good. You're not, you ain't me. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And with us today, we have the lovely Trinity Sainer. How you doing, Trinity? I'm doing good. How are y'all? Uh, we're fantastic. We are excellent. Fantastic. Good. So, Glad to hear what, you. What are you doing today, T? You working or what are you up to? Man, to and fro, we're trying to get the whole uh, goat, sheep, pasture land thing going. And so it's involving clearing off. You know, when you live in the hills, man, it's a, it's a different situation. You know, it's not yeah. like Indiana, Ohio, where you're like, hey, I think I'll raise some beef cattle. You know, here's my big flat piece of ground. Now, this yeah. here involves a little bit more into it. So we're working through that. You know, the Chicks Carlton is up and running. We're killing it there. And now we're to the nice. next step. We've got to clear off pasture land. So, yeah, just to and fro, doing our thing, man. That's awesome. We're up here. so. Uh, <laughs> but we're getting ready to head out because we got shows in Kentucky to go do. And I'm looking forward to that. So, Trinity, what part of the world are you in? Where do you, where do you reside? I reside in northern Kentucky. So... Oh, okay. Yeah. So yep. I'm gonna be seeing you then, probably, right? Like, I wish. I wish. Oh, really? So, You're not doing none of those? Okay. Yeah. No. Um, I was hoping to get down to uh, Hindman, and yeah. uh, my dad owning his own small business. We travel around to some of the outdoor expos, and I'm actually going to be working an outdoor expo up in Columbus. Wow. Um, okay. Yep. During the Hindman show, and then Bowling Green. I just taken some <laughs> just time. Don't, off. It don't work. Yeah, I don't blame yeah. you. You got to have yeah. time off. So, what's your dad's business? If he's in the outdoor arena, what's he doing? So his business is called Racked Outdoors, and he specializes in anything hunting related. So anything from uh, bog tripods to outdoor edge knives. Okay. Pretty much anything that you could possibly need for hunting, he he's got you covered so well that's nice. cool huh? yeah i like that yep. and and you've got uh your company too well uh, one that i know of um the made ready gear what yes. else do you do besides the the made ready gear and we'll talk about what that is in a minute but, but right do you have so, other companies too? Um, say that again i'm sorry so do you have other companies too other businesses there or is that the only one Nope, nope. Uh, Made Ready Gear is the only business that I own, um, and it's it's a side gig, side job. Um, my full time yeah. job is actually I'm a care provider for an adult with special needs. So oh, that okay. is awesome. Yeah, that's the full time job. Um, and then Made Ready Gear um, just kind of came about in uh, 2021, just from a love of of sewing and absolutely being a gear junkie. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you're you're in the right club here. So cuz uh, that's it. We are definitely <laughs> gear junkies. So yeah. so I was looking over the stuff that you make. I mean, and you know, they're kit bags essentially. You're making gear bags and stuff like that. And which is cool because I think the zipper bags and stuff like that are underrated in your ruck, you know, being able to keep your stuff organized and that kind yeah. of thing. I like it a lot. And yeah. I use a lot of the zipper bags like that. So I'm going to check yours out. Absolutely. I might order some of these. I was going to say, I've got some that I can show on camera today. I've got a couple yeah. different yeah. Break that stuff out. out. Yeah, Break it let's out. see them. Oh, let's sure. see what that yeah. looks like. And uh, so, Let me see here. We've got uh, the mini gear bag here. So it's actually perfect size for 
credit cards, driver's license, cash, uh, and actually you can use them as a uh, cartridge carrier um, for, you know, pretty much almost anything that would fit in here. So that's, that's that. Um, and then like you mentioned, the uh, kit bags, this is actually the Medium 2.0. Uh, it's got integrated belt loops here. It'll fit up to a uh, two inch tall belt. It's got the uh, YKK zippers, which I really like. It's the molded plastic. Um, uh, 1000D, 5000, or excuse me, 1000D or 500D, depending on the pattern. Uh, Cordura, so it's water resistant. It's got great wear resistance. Um, this size works great. Throw in like an Alpen headlamp. Um, so yeah, that's the medium 2.0. We've got the uh, large 2.0 here. Again, YKK zippers. You've got uh, zipper stop here, little pool tab. Um, you've also got, you know, a handle here where you can hang it. So that's the large 2.0. And then here, We've got a uh, sit pad, so you can actually, it's got four of these webbing tabs, so you can attach it almost to any pack. Um, got orange for signaling, but then I do a lot of turkey hunting here in Kentucky, and I've actually taken this out. It's like a, uh, like a foliage green. It's actually a ranger green is the color on here, um, but yeah, with turkey hunting, you don't want to don't want to stick out. So that's kind of a multi-use bag. Um, you can actually use it as a gathering bag. Just take the foam out. Um, so that's the sit pad. And then I also up here have got a game bag set or a field bag set. Great for uh, dove hunting, squirrel hunting. It's got elastic here. You can just slip stuff in and out. Great for trap shooting as well. Um, I sell it as a set. Uh, and the set comes with two of the smaller bags here. And then one of the large. Or I sell them individually. So, And I'm looking to, uh, to expand my lines and um, thinking about you know, creating some new, new bags, but I don't just want to put anything out. It, it goes through yeah. rigorous testing. And yeah. so the, the process is slow, but when I do put a product out, I want to make sure that number one, it's a product that is going to meet my quality standards, but yeah. it's going to meet everyone else's as well, because if it doesn't work, then why, why spend money? On yeah, it? that's, that's my exactly. Point. And I like your sit pad. Uh, that's something, you know, turkey hunters always use those, but it's an interesting thing. And in, in the war in Ukraine, both the Russians and the Ukrainians wear those. And it, to me, it's a, it's a brilliant move on the part of infantrymen to have one of those hanging off the, the back of your kit. So anytime you sit down, you're sitting on something dry and not yeah. in the muck or the wet, you know. Um, and I, I've always thought, you know, more soldiers ought to wear those things. I don't know why they don't, but I, that's a great idea. If it wasn't blaze orange, I would like that. I can't, don't put blaze orange on the our kit. <laughs> it's a different kind of I, I like the two inch, <laughs> two inch belt too. I like the two inch belt. I, I won't yeah. say yeah. who, but I bought some, uh, some britches here while back and went to throw my inner, inner fighter belt on and it wouldn't wouldn't go through i was pretty upset yeah. and i have all these pants can't wear my wear my war fighter belt so the two oh, inch straps no. that's cool now do you do you do everything right there your manufacture everything there you're cutting it you're sewing it you're putting it together that's all you yep sweet yeah well awesome. and so full disclosure mama does help me cut out fabric every now and then so that's a family, very much a family run operation. <laughs> <laughs> right Hang on, sorry guys, my computer's telling me it's not charging when it's hooked to the damn charger. Uh, so T, if you take over for just a sec, man, I got to sort out this power issue. I'll be right back.
No, nope, you you're can... good. You're good. Carry on, man. I'll be the, right back. That's the beauty. That's the beautiful part. Is is it's not live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how long have you been manufacturing? You said this was 2021 that you started doing gear. Uh, yes, yeah, circa September 2021. Okay, so... and. Then, and how did you find yourself doing that? You just, you saw a need for it. You were like, I need to, I need something to fill, fulfill this need because you're as a big game hunter or huntress <laughs> to be, to be exact. I mean, is that, is that what drove the the manufacturing? So originally how this all came about was uh, I'm, I'm fairly short um, and I'm about five, okay. four and <laughs> All of my pants need to be hemmed, it seems like. And uh, I didn't know how to do that. My mamaw uh, had to teach me. And uh, I thought, you know what? I can, now that I know how to do it, I, I can start doing my own stuff. And uh, the first thing that I ever made was a pair of uh, leg gaiters. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I thought, yeah, you know, I love, I love gear. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can, you know, like I said, start doing my own sewing and uh the first pair of leg gaiters that i ever made i mean they functioned they they worked um up where i turkey hunt we have a lot of uh what we call sticky ups it's a very you know very professional term <laughs> but uh you know you'll, you'll be walking through the fields and uh just from where they bush hog and stuff you know it, it they miss stuff and it stuff sticks up <laughs> So, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, we'd be walking through the sticky ups and your pants would always get caught. And so these leg gaiters that I made kind of, you know, helped keep all of my excess pant material. in. Uh, and like I said, I mean, they worked. Uh, they weren't the most, you know, gorgeous of things, but they functioned. And so um, kind of told some people about them, showed some people, um, started making my own little uh, gear bags, ditty bags, if you will. And uh, a lot of people encouraged me to start selling the gear that I made. And for me, stepping out to do that, to put my name on a product to sell to the public, it was a kind of a nerve wracking thing um, because you never know how people are going to receive it. How, you know, things work for me, but you know, what happens if somebody would happen to buy something and, you know, things happen, you know, what happens if it fails or if it, you know, but I finally did step out and uh, I started selling my own things. And uh, so far I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. So wonderful. I haven't really looked back. That's awesome. Well, now we should have done this to start with, but but let's let's give everybody an idea of, of exactly who you are, and, and what you're doing because you're, we're sitting here talking about Kit, but they don't think folks realize exactly who you are, what you do. So I know you're, and it's funny just by the story you tell and why you got into sewing and what you were doing, like the first thing you ever made leg gators, because you're a big time hunter. You like to you enjoy hunting. We've already talked about turkey hunting and other stuff, but but that's the main focus of, of the businesses that you guys are in is all in that vein. And it's your lifestyle. I'm not gonna say hobby mm -hmm. because it's more than that. It's a lifestyle for you, isn't it? It is. It is. So, uh, my dad, uh, you know, kind of, I grew up hunting with him. Um, he actually, I don't remember this, but he tells a story, um, about the first time that he ever took me hunting. We went squirrel hunting. And he actually shot a squirrel and he wanted to let it, um, you know, die before we came up on it. Uh, and uh, so we, we waited about a half hour and he knew the squirrel was dead. So he went and picked it up and he was holding it. And he said, so, you know, what do you think about this? And apparently my response was, yep, well, he's a goner. Yep, well, <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> so... You know, we've always done things, you know, as a family that have always been outside, whether it's been camping, hiking, hunting, boating, uh, four wheeling. You know, we've always been an outdoor family, but hunting definitely is something that my dad and I just rally around. It, it brings us a lot closer. So um, I whitetail hunt, um, I turkey hunt, 
Uh, I have killed a coyote before. Um, been stalked by a couple coyotes. And then most oh. recently, I've uh, been black bear hunting up in Maine, which... I saw that picture. It's yeah, impressive. That, one, that one's my passion <laughs> for sure. Awesome. The black bear hunting is... Oh, absolutely. Um, so up in Maine, uh, there's a couple different methods of, of hunting black bear. Um, you can actually trap them, which I haven't done, but you can hunt them over bait or you can uh, do what they call a hound hunt. So uh, 2021, I ended up going to Maine for the first time and I did a bait hunt. Uh, I was unsuccessful at that. Uh, saw a ton of moose, didn't see any bear. And just fell in love with Maine. It's it's beautiful up there. It is. It is really nice up there. I've been up there a couple of times. And uh, and I got a buddy that lives up there. He, he's a retired firefighter. And he's built a cabin up in Maine, up in the North Woods up there. And he loves it. Yeah. Loves it's, it. it's, it's awesome because, you know, up there, the timber companies own so much land. So technically it's private, but they do allow the public to come in and recreate on the land. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really cool. And the people up there are just so nice. It's, you know, it's very much a outdoor recreation friendly state. People just respect your stuff. So. But. Yeah. And the people up there are interesting. We were, uh, when we were up there, I was, I forget where we were trying to go. We we're trying to get, get somewhere. And I stopped in a little convenience store, a little independently owned thing on the side of the road. And I'll never forget it. It was an old manor in there. He had the the hat with the ear flaps on it, you know. He was wearing his overalls, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I was telling him, "So I'm trying to get over here." And, and this, he knows shit. Looks at me, he goes, "Well, can't get there from here. You have to go someplace else first. And I was just like, "Did he really just say that to me?" Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> but it is. A, it's just that's no shit. What he said to me, I was just blinking. I'm like, uh, "Where the hell are we? Like, what happened?" Uh, (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness yeah very uh, cool i i just i don't know i love it up there so it is beautiful it's nice i like it It so you're in northern kentucky and where do you primarily hunt is it kentucky or are you one of those folks that travels all over to hunt i i don't travel i don't travel very often to hunt so mainly kentucky um yeah, so mainly mainly Kentucky. We actually yep. hunt down uh, by the Ark, uh, that's in Williamstown, Kentucky. So, yeah, it's um, Kentucky's fun to hunt. It really is. We've got a lot of a uh, lot of different critters. So, yeah, my wife wants to hunt badly, and we maybe this year I can figure out somewhere to get her to hunt. She, I got her a uh, forty five seventy for anniversary a couple of years ago, but she's died to shoot something with it. She just she can't wait. <laughs> Man, it's yeah. shoulder it's slayer. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. straight she shoulder it, slayer. She had it out the other day. She was shooting it out in the backyard. I was just like, Oof. I've seen her doing what? it. I mean, I, I oh, give yeah. her props. I run a couple boxes through a forty-five seventy. It, there could be a, been alcohol involved, but not supposed <laughs> to actually say that. But you know, only a, a drunken idiot would stand there and shoot two boxes of 4570 back to back. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, my shoulder was trash. Oh, trash yeah. the next yeah. day. And they say, oh, that's because you didn't have it pulled firmly into you. No, bullshit. <laughs> that thing, it doesn't matter how firmly you pull it in there. It's going to kick you stupid. Yeah, it's going to thump you for damn sure. Um, hey, Trinity, you talked about bear hunting. I got a, a buddy out in Wyoming that he's gone to Minnesota, I think, a couple of times. Uh, and, and they ran them with dogs yeah. out there, and he's taking some that way. And he has uh, uh, cougar hounds. So he was, I don't know if he still has them. I think he does. Uh, but he was hunting mountain lions out in Wyoming. You know, ranchers would yeah. pay him to come out and run the, either run the cats off or kill them off, you know, yeah. off of their, yeah. their ranches out there. And right. uh, that was always interesting. But he loves the, the bear hunting too. So, and yeah. did you, have you taken a bear yet? I did. I did. Uh, nice. So I actually went up, uh, let's see, last September and I did a hound hunt, uh, believe it or not, and uh, fell in love with the hound hunting. Like it is in my blood. Um, <laughs> nice. So yeah, I'm actually going back this September uh, for another hound hunt. And uh, yeah, it was, whew, it, it was crazy. It was nuts. Um, yeah. 
once that dog, once some dogs get a, get a scent, it, it's it's on. Then it, the game is on. So yeah, we actually yeah. hound hunt here at the house. Um, I have two fat hounds that live inside the house, and the bear come to our back door to eat them uh, because they're so well fed. I actually have pictures of probably three hundred pound black bear at the back door of the of the house, sniffing around, oh, wow. sniffing the dogs inside. You know. And, uh, and then, you, of course, you got Amber who puts oats out there and molasses and stuff, feeding these things. She's like, no, that's Yogi. He's part of the family. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Whatever, man. I think I'm going to walk outside one day. That thing's going to be standing there. Yeah, there's a, there's a lady down home down in Florida that feeds them. Uh, and she's got video of, like, of the, the bear pushed her door open. Yeah. And like stuck his head in the house, and she like yelled yeah. at him and told him to get out, and he backed out. And then another, she got another video of him laying like on her stoop, half in her front door and half out, sleeping, just laying there sleeping. <laughs> just, yeah, the only like way that'd be about, happening here is it was a rug. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> well, Florida, Florida's had such stringent laws on on killing bears that there was it was almost impossible to even kill one in self defense and not be charged. Really? I prosecuted. Oh, yeah. Like, it was it was a big deal. I, I know I've got a friend that killed one a few years ago. That was, at first, it was attacking livestock. It was killing his goats when he came outside. And he had a shotgun with him, and he was trying to run it off. And he's running at it, yelling, and well, it charged him. It left the goat and came after him. So he had to shoot it and kill it. And they spent two years, like, I mean, trying very hard to put him in prison. Um, you know, at one point, they're even like, well, self-defense is not a defense in this case you can't use it <laughs> but they finally just changed the laws yeah they just changed the law like even if you came across one that had been struck by a vehicle and was laying on the side of the road in in terrible pain laying there howling you could not dispatch that animal you had to call game game and fish and you know three days later they might get out there um but yeah they, even if you put one down that was injured like that you'd get arrested Wow, it was, it's ridiculous. But they finally just eased up on the laws. It looks like uh, so you can at least shoot them if they're you know destroying livestock or or in self defense. Because um, right. I've I've been charged by two bears in the Ocala forest, um, and I had a third one climb all the way up the tree I was in to my tree stand, like had his paws on the platform, sniffing my boots and everything, you know. <laughs> but I'm sitting there, I got my bow in my hand and my phone. I was filming him, and uh, I was sitting perfectly still. He climbed all the way up sniffing my boots and i just went I'm gonna, i was sitting real still and i was just like what are you doing just like that and you could see the realization he was like shit it's one of those damn it you know <laughs> i mean he, <laughs> he he went down that tree a hell of a lot faster and he came up it and when he hit the ground it just sounded like a volkswagen going through the woods man he just went that way like there wasn't no trail he just went that way and uh and i tell you me we've had some, we've had some close calls like at, at amber and i when we got married very very many moons ago we got married in Gatlinburg. We had this cabin, you know, cabin outside of Gatlinburg, which, yeah, you know, there's there's houses all over the place in Gatlinburg. You you look at the picture and you're like, oh, this cabin in the woods. Well, they just cropped out the houses on both sides. They got you know, they but, got that that angle exactly right to not catch any of the other yeah, houses. Yeah, to catch all the woods and the trees and like, like yeah, cool, you know, you we get there, right of course. You stand right here. Yeah. <laughs> Put a blinder on one side. You have this great woods scenery behind the cabin. But yeah. so we were there and I, I had a good friend of mine, childhood friend. He's way up in age. He was in his seventies at the time and uh, lived in Missouri. And uh, he was a, uh, he's a motorcycle minister. Okay. So him and his buddy, both in their seventies, they're like, I'm like, look, Lynn, come out and marry us. I think it would be awesome because I'd known this guy since I was a little kid. And he's like, definitely, we'll go. So they ride over 700 miles to come wow. marry us up there. So they're all sitting on the porch. This is We, we were there for a couple of days before, before we had the, the ceremony. And um, we had a black bear, small, you know, but when it stands up, it's taller than me. It's still considered oh, yeah. a small black bear. And it's tearing yeah. the shit out of the garbage. You know, it oh, just shit. keeps coming back. And I, and I come out there, I'm like, man... This bear is making me out. So I'm sitting on the porch one day. We're all out there. We're sitting and uh, this bear, here it comes. And it's it starts knocking the garbage over. I run out there. I've got a pistol in my pants as usual. I'm like, hey, bear, you know, get out of here, bear. And it's like, it, it just looks at me. I get a little closer. Hey, bear, you know, get out of here, bear. And then it stands up and it starts walking towards me. And I'm like, whoa, bear. 
you know, like <laughs> you need to back off a little bit. And so I pull my pistol out and I'm like, Luke bear. And then my kids, you know, they're in the background. They're like, no, don't shoot the bear dad. I'm like, man, screw this bear. This thing's about to get popped right here in the middle of the street. So, uh, my two buddies, they come running out. Amber comes out. There is four pistols on this bear. We're standing in the middle of the street. Oh, and shit. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, here comes a car. It comes up over the little hill. These two elderly Asian people are driving. The bear, oh, shit. <laughs> the bear ducks down and jumps right off the hillside. They don't even see the bear. But they oh. see four white folk with guns pointed at their windshield. Oh, and they're like, shit. Oh, God, oh. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. There was a bear. I swear there was a bear. You know, they're like, Oh, I'm like, oh my God, we're going to jail. I want to hear it was the story crazy, that man. they it was told. Crazy. Luckily, yeah, they didn't call the cops on us, but I guarantee yeah. you they went home and they're like, man, those Americans are a bunch of crazy asses, man. Don't, well, like, don't <laughs> go to Gatlinburg. Those people are nuts. Like, like Trinity said, I'd like to hear their version of the story. Like, <laughs> what was their version? Just riding through Gatlinburg, we come over a hill, and all the white people are standing there with guns. Like you know. in our face, screaming, you know. Yeah, screaming. I mean it was it was horrible. I'm like, I'm trying to tell them I'm sorry. We put the guns down. We're like, we're sorry. I'm so sorry. And they're like, Meow. you know, they're. Like, oh, man. They, they didn't want to stop and talk. Nah, they, they didn't, didn't want to stop. There was no there was no conver com conversating after that. They were all done. <laughs> yeah. Well, Trinity, you're gonna make it to Mountain Readiness, right? Yes. Yep. That's it. You will be there. All right. Yep. And in that, and 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 with that thought in mind, we're gonna run a quick little mountain readiness yeah. promo here. Um, I always sure. appreciate that, brother. Dude, that's what we got to do, man. We gotta we gotta put this thing out there. banning is a real thing and i know it affects me greatly one of the things we're doing to get around that is the new website has a sign up where you can get the newsletter i highly recommend you go over and do that because you're not getting notifications from all the platforms even patreon's not sending out notifications but if you get on the mailing list you'll get the newsletter and any important updates i'm not going to spam you with a bunch of email I'm damn sure you're not going to sell your email address. You don't have to worry about that kind of thing. But it's a way that you'll be able to keep up with what's going on. Because too many people are saying, hey, I didn't get the notification for this. I didn't know you are doing that. That's because social media hates me. And they're not sending stuff out. So hit the link down below. Sign up to, to the mail list. You'll get the weekly newsletter and the updates that come out periodically. But if you want to stay connected, it's the best way to do it. Hit the link below. And you guys know the drill. Be good or be good at it. There's that awesome promo spot. The, second the extended one. version. The you know, brother, I love brother, it. That was a good, that was a good, I did not know you had a newsletter. Man. Yeah. No, just yeah. now. I need to, yeah, I need to run these things a little more often than I do. I just, I, I don't, I hate the self, the, promote, the shameless, selfless promotion yeah. shit. I don't, um, I hate doing it. But that was you good. Need to. You, I, you have to. Yeah. I liked it. He was like, and media hates me. I was like, right <laughs> on. <laughs> they do. They do. Which they they do. do. They do most of us. Yeah. So, Trinity, do you know who Stephen Ronella is? I'm sure you do. I do, yeah. Okay, all right. Because, um, you know, I've, I've followed Steve for years, um, <laughs> for, for a number of years. I remember he uh, he did a, a black bear hunt somewhere, uh, probably Alaska, I'm going to guess, because the bear, the bear that he took had been eating blueberries. Okay. And I just remember the bear fat was, sorry, I've been hearing things. Um, the bear fat tasted like blueberries, he said. And they rendered some of it down and then deep fried chunks of the bear as they were uh, dressing it out 
yeah. in its own fat. Like, I was just like, man, I'll bet that's some rich ass pieces of meat right there. It's, I, I love bear meat. Um, I'd never had it until, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get mine and, uh, it is, it is so good. Um, so up in Maine, they eat a lot of berries and stuff up there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it actually in Maine for baiting, they're not allowed to use meat. So they'll use like donuts and Oreos yeah, yeah. and granola and stuff yeah. like that. So it makes yeah. the meat a little sweeter. And, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I absolutely love bear meat and I've got my bears fat. So I haven't rendered any down yet. So I don't have any bear oh. grease. Oh yeah, yep. you gotta do that. Yep. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah and, it's... and you, you know, then too that like bears, like uh, what is it, seventy-five or eighty percent of them, or something like that, all carry meningitis and trichinosis, and so you've got to be real careful with bear meat. Yeah. As far as when so, you're cooking. Yeah. So I've got some uh, guides uh, up in Maine. They're they're friends of ours. But uh, they actually, Maine has not had a reported case of trichinosis, trichinosis excuse me, words, um, yeah. since I believe it's 1976. Well, so, that's good. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with, there again, what people use to bait. But, oh, yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, of course, we cook our bear meat to, you know, the proper temperature and all of that. But, yeah, no, Maine hasn't had a reported case of trichinosis since, since the second. I did not know this, though. I, I oh, have yeah. no idea. I've never ate bear meat, and it was like we were on a really super high note. It was like, yeah, bear is awesome. Cook it in its fat. It's amazing. Oh, and you could die. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Well, I'm like, well, that well, sucks. Something like 80% of the trichinosis cases in the country are a result of undercooked bear meat. So think about yeah. that. You think about how many people in this country eat bear meat. Not that I, many. And then eighty nope. percent of those people with trichinosis were the ones that were eating bear meat. So it it is very prevalent. And yeah, I'm in good. I'm American solid bears. And Just, I'm going to uh, stand by my well done steak eating habits. I know everybody's going to hate me. They're going to be like, "Oh my God, T eats well done steak, you rotten piece of." Hey, standing by, <laughs> standing by. <laughs> well, at bear meat, you better cook it all the way. So yes, all the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think trichinosis dies at like 160 degrees, so that's yep. still, that's not that hot, you know. No, no, that's, uh, like I said, I think we, we uh, so I turned 30 in November, and uh, in my family are, you know, whoever's birthday it is, that's who gets to decide, you know, what they're having for their birthday dinner, and so I wanted bare tenderloin. And, oh, nice, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, so I think we cooked yeah. it at like a to 160 or 165 degrees, and it was yeah. it was kind of like a uh, almost like a medium well. Yeah. So, yeah. very very good. I mean, you're only yeah. about 60 degrees on the low side compared to what I hit it with. So, <laughs> 60 <laughs> degrees. God. No kidding, man. Amber, she she cooks a steak. It's like this this is a true story. She drinks an entire beer after she's put my steak on before she puts her steak on that way they come off wow. at the same time yeah man, holy that's, shit I want that thing just charred man if you ain't knocking so you carbon like yours off, like you ain't carbon eating, right? yes. <laughs> if you're not knocking carbon off you're not <laughs> eating right that carbon off on the side <laughs> you're not. oh my god dude that's awful man <laughs> it is but I mean, you know, it's amazing what the body can get used to. I mean, I love it. You, you know, you could, the, the body can get used to torture. It doesn't matter what it is. It burnt steak, you know, living out, the, living out in the middle of nowhere by yourself, starving. It's all good. Works out great. <laughs> yeah. Burnt steak. Living out burnt in the middle steak. of nowhere. I've, I've caught more crap over having a well-done steak. And sometimes it's horrible to go to a restaurant mm. with people because of that. You're all sitting there. You had a nice steakhouse, Brazilian steakhouse, downtown uh, Chicago. Yeah. You know, I've actually been yeah. there. You know, a high dollar, hundred dollar a steak meal. And, you know, this guy, yes, yeah, so well, or, you know, medium, medium, well, uh, medium. Everybody goes around and I'm like, <laughs> well done. And they're like, what you say? <laughs> well done. <laughs> the whole restaurant turns and looks at you. Yeah, everybody, you hear that? You hear that collective? Ooh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I was actually told I was refused service at a fancy restaurant in Winston Salem. Amber and I, we love this restaurant. Great steak, and it, and it is one of the only places I can go that I can get a well done steak that I can cut with a fork. I mean, it's amazing. Really? I don't know what they do to it. It is amazing. But she said, I "Dry want to aging." Try. That's what yeah. dry aging. Probably. Do it. But she yeah. said, uh, "She said they got wagyu steak on on sale. I want to try it." I said, "Let's go have a wagyu steak." You know, we get down there, and she's like, "Yeah." You know, rare. I'm like, cool. And they're like, well, how would you like yours? I said, well done. It's like, oh, be right back, sir. And they went back. And the the the, the chef come out and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, sir, but we can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean you can't? You throw it on there, you let it burn, you bring it you out. Let to it me. Burn. <laughs> it's simple. And he's like, I'm sorry, sir, we can't do that. I'm like, just give me a New York strip, call it a day. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. you, you put I... it on there, you you overcook the shit out of it, and you bring it out here and I'll eat it. That's I mean, it's simple, you... yeah. I'd be like, look, my wife can go back there when she's done drinking her my beer and put hers not. on, and we can eat that shit. <laughs> my wife can come problem. back there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but no, they wouldn't do hilarious. it. Man. They wouldn't do it. It blew my mind. I was like, what kind of restaurant is this? You communist? Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. I can't get my steak burnt. <laughs> They're like, we're not about to start selling well done Wagyu. <laughs> yeah. That's just not this, happening. This yeah. isn't that kind of establishment, sir. This is not. <laughs> We have standards. What kind of place sir. do you think you're in, sir? <laughs> yeah. That's it. That was it. That was all she wrote. No wagyu steak for me. No wagyu steak for you. Man, oh, that's me... rough. That's rough. That is rough. I feel so for Trinity, you. The so Trinity. Um, when we started talking about coming to Mount Readiness, which I'm super fired up to meet you and have you there as a part of the, the Mount Hell Readiness yeah. crew, it's going to be an awesome time. Uh, especially, I got to talk to you know. Uh, Blackie's coming now too, and all this. Yep. You you bring a you bring a crowd as well, so that's awesome. But I think I heard that you were a huge Weatherman fan, and I wanted to ask how <laughs> how did Chris and his his survival book series what how did that bring you into the survival thing? I mean, what what did that what did that look like? So I didn't discover going home until 2014. Uh, I was in college at the time and I was commuting back and forth from my college to my house. And I don't remember what exactly was going on in the world at the time, but mm -hmm. there were talks of, you know, unrest and protests and things like that. And I was reading the book and in the book, Morgan ends up traveling, I believe it was what, 200 miles? Back 250 ish 250 okay yeah. and 250. i was commuting about 20 miles and so mm -hmm. i'm reading the book and all of this is going on in the world and i realized that i didn't have the skills or the knowledge to even get myself home from 20 miles nice. so i my uncle and his friend friend sorry uh <laughs> they, brand they yeah, had it's gone right. to my uh it's all right your kentucky show it keep going it's okay it's all good it's, it's... <laughs> so they had actually gone to a bushcraft uh gathering uh that year and so i was able to go with them and just absolutely fell in love with everything about it uh, the community yeah. was awesome you know everyone was so willing to share knowledge and tips and yeah. tricks and so but yeah, that reading your book got, you know, the wheels turning in my mind that, hey, I don't have the skills to get myself home if I absolutely had to. So, and That's then cool. awesome. after I went to my first gathering, I needed all the knowledge. And of course, you know, I think when a lot of people start out, you know, some people tend to get more obsessed with gear and i absolutely fell into that you know you'd say i need, I need I all mean, of this yeah, gear because all gear. of this gear is going to make me better and you know of course i'm a gear maker so of course i'm going to say yeah you know gear absolutely is essential because you know yeah. no one wants to you know carry all of their stuff you know in their arms that's just not practical yep but i think you know like i said I, it's it knowledge weighs nothing so yep. uh, it's really hard to lose it. It's real hard to lose it and hard to, you know, I mean, you can forget, but 
But yeah. once you've learned something and if you've mastered it, you, you know, even if you don't practice it for some time, it's like the old, it's like riding a bike, you know, when you get back on it, you'll start to remember it quickly. Yeah. So I say the same thing. That's what we, we preach around here training. We tell people to get training. We don't care where you go or who you train with as long as they're, you know, a reputable instructor, but, but right. go out and learn, you know, not just buy shit. You got to go learn to do shit. That's, that's absolutely the difference. So, yeah. And that's a nice, you know, those two things um, are good companions of one another. You're, you're hunting and now bushcraft and survival and stuff. That's all. It's one continuation of essentially the same thing. You're just broadening it a little bit. Absolutely. Know? That's so when I went on my uh, <clears throat> bait hunt up in Maine two years ago, we actually had the remnants of a hurricane blow through. And uh, when you bait hunt up in Maine, you go out about noon or 1230 and then you're out until dark. And mm -hmm. then thir the Thursday that I was up there was actually when the remnants were blowing in. And it had been like high 60s, maybe 70s. And then that that front was coming in. And I mean, the bottom just fell out. And so, you know, I'm not dressed, you know, appropriately for like a 20 degree temperature drop. So I'm yeah. sitting in my stand winds just blowing like crazy um I, you know get out of the stand and i'm i'm cold i'm shivering and i had about a 150 yard walk uphill and if you've ever been to maine or if any of the listeners have ever been to maine <laughs> it's not easy walking especially no. going through the clear cuts yeah so yeah I'm where walking. all the snags are and all that shit the logging companies leave behind, their skitters yeah. tear up the ground, it's all rutted. Yeah, it's yeah. rough to get through. So I'm I'm walking uphill through all of this and I cannot stop shivering. And I know I you know, there's a logging road that we had to wait on to be picked up. And I'm like, I've got to get a fire going. I've got to get mm -hmm. a fire. Like I just you it was one of those things where like you know that if you don't get warm you're in trouble mm -hmm. and, you're, and, so, and the, the window of opportunity for that fire is beginning to close as well because you're gonna like you said you're shivering right well what comes yep. next we're going to start losing manual dexterity you yep. know we're going to start losing our fine motor skills and you're going to be uh, end up in a position where even if you had a box of matches you couldn't strike any of them exactly <laughs> to, to, build, to build that fire so so yeah yeah that's and that's where like you mentioned hunting and survival go hand in hand because up in Maine, there's a lot of birch trees and oh, you know, yeah. birch, birch goes up great. So I'm like, I've got a great tender source yeah. and I had a, uh, a lighter in my pack. And then I also wear, I don't know if you guys have seen the. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, so know that, I, was, I know those boys well, they're great. Dustin, they're great dudes. Yeah. So. so I, you know, I have that and, um, I get about 50 yards from the road. And my guide, I saw his headlights coming down the road. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So, they, oh, and yeah. so my guide's name was Steve. And God love him, poor Steve. I made him turn the, the heat up to like 90 degrees in his Ford for 10 minutes. And I'm, oh. <laughs> and he's oh, just yeah. pouring the sweat. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> But yeah, like you said, I mean, survival and hunting go hand in hand because you never know when something's going to happen. You know, I had no idea when Steve was going to pick me up because up in Maine, yeah. you know, they pick up multiple people. So you might be waiting 15 minutes. You might be waiting two hours and 15 minutes. You, you just don't know because you don't get service yeah. up there. Right. So <clears throat> having that knowledge really is power. Um Oh, yeah. again, it's it's just comforting to know like, Hey, I'm going to be okay because I know how to do this. Yep. So well, and you know, I, like the bushcraft, I've always referred to that as like lifeboat skills. You yeah. know, that's cause if I'm down to rubbing sticks together, things have gone terribly wrong. That means I've lost all <laughs> my kit. I, you know, I, everything's gone to hell if I'm rubbing sticks together, but you should know how to do that because you may find yourself in that position. You know, we always say yep. plan for the worst and hope for the best, you know? Um, well, that's the worst case scenario, being with no kit, you know, and, and me and uh, Alan T, we need to do this with you one time. Um, my buddy, John, Nikki, we would 
walk up on a mountain in Georgia with just the clothes on our backs and not even a pocket knife and, okay. and do the whole thing, fire, shelter, water, food, the whole thing. Um, and we filmed it. It's uh, oh, I need to find that. I'll put that link out again. Cause it was pretty cool. You know, 48 hours on the mountain with no tools. And, uh, and we had everything. We had a, a big lean to shelter that fit five guys. We had a long fire out in front of it. Um, we had, uh, we found a spring that we seep. We cleaned out. We made nice. two like bowls in the, in the sand. So you would drink from the first one, wash your hands in the second one, you know, farther from the water source. Um, yep. and we collected, uh, fruit some nuts and edibles that we could find. We roasted some uh, white pine bark into chips and that was dinner, you know, and, uh, yeah. but we'd go out with absolutely, like I said, we went out there with nothing. And it was kind of funny on the video. You can even see, we we're always going like, Hey, who's got the good rock? Like, <laughs> because we had one rock that was kind of had a sharp edge to it that you could yep. use eventually to, to cut through something. And so it was just, we we're always like, Hey, who's got the good rock? I need the rock, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes you appreciate that gear we were talking about, because if you yeah. are prepared when you wander out there and you do have the basics, you know, um, layering is a wonderful thing in the main woods, you know, but, uh, yeah. you know, having that ability to make a fire, having something to, you know, carry in a tarp with you, I would recommend because that way it's instant shelter. If it's yeah. raining and it's cold, you, you, there's, it's so hard to produce a waterproof shelter in nature. Right. It only makes sense to carry one. Just like, it's one of the hardest things to produce in nature or replicate is a metal container, like, you know, a Tokes cup or a camp cup. That's something we don't think about. They're produced in China by the zillions and they're five bucks at Walmart, but go make one of those in nature for me. That'll do what that'll do that. You can dig with it. You can boil in it. You can put it on a fire. You can use it as a hammer. You can do whatever. You're not going to create that in nature. So carry the stuff, but learn the skills to function without it. Um, yeah. You know, and it'll just make you better in the woods all the way around. I mean, not that T knows anything about living in the woods. But you're <laughs> muted. You're muted. How about now? Now you go. That's me yeah. fingering around on this mic. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying I'm currently looking for a uh, pocket-sized Allen K. Pack around a with pocket me. Pocket-sized Allen K. It's pretty elusive, though. Yeah. Get a hold of that yeah. guy. Pocket-sized yeah, Allen K. That's like the that's the twenty twenty four version of a trunk monkey. Right. You know? <laughs> not, to just be, your, not to be confused you, with a crack house monkey. No, we all no, 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 not a crack house monkey, a trunk monkey. You remember the commercials trunk. the trunk trunk monkey? You yeah. don't see that commercial? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the trunk got the fucking ball bat. But uh but yeah. I'm trying to we're trying to engineer one now. It'll be a ruck. And when you unzip it, a, a little miniature Alan K jumps out and yeah, he phenomenal. puts your camp together and he he does all the shit for money. you. Dude. Take my, my money. <laughs> Take my money. Take my money. And hopefully in Trinity, there is a story with that crack house monkey and, I, and they yes, probably will show back up most likely. And so you will see firsthand it's a real monkey that showed up at Mount it's Readiness real last crack house May monkey. and okay. was saved from a drug dealer and this thing. Um, I don't know, man. It's pretty wild. I know. I know. Chris had his hand on his pistol, I think, most of the time around. Well, because the yeah. thing's like, he's like, I'm going to make it charge you. And I was like, you better make it stop, too. Like, cause, yeah. or I will. I yeah. Mean, yeah, it'd be a, it'd be a pet ass monkey. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That'd be a class down in mountain readiness, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey. Hand to hand combatives for crack house monkeys. Yes. Yeah, monkey that, class for sign me up. Hey, man, that thing was scary, though, dude. It was scary. Yeah, it, I'm not going to lie. It, it, was, it was a scary little dude. It lived in a crack house and all it ate was bananas. Like it's a monkey that will not eat bananas. Or wait, was that the monkey? There was one that was a pet someplace. I don't know if it was him or not, but there's another one that was a pet someplace that was kept in a very small cage its whole life. And all it was ever fed was bananas. And so I'm now like, sure. it, had been, it had been rescued. And now like if you gave that monkey a banana, it beat your ass. Like it'd come after you. No, I'm pretty sure banana. that. I'm tired pretty sure that monkey there was fed uh, crack and gunpowder. That's what that yeah, monkey was fed. <laughs> because my wife had been talking to, to these folks online, and they had asked her if they could come, and she's like, yeah. And so she told me, and I tell T, I'm like, look, there's going to be some folks up with some animals that are going to stop by and visit. And T, you're up at the gate, and that guy rolled up. What did he say to you? Well, no, we didn't. We didn't know. We, you forgot yeah. to tell us. Oh, we're right, out there at the gate. Yeah. And yeah. We're wrapping yeah. up. We're wrapping up. And then this 
this uh, kidnapper van with no windows in it and stuff like rolling in. rolls in and it was, you know, and it was one of those like, you know, one of those that says like free candy on the side, you know, oh, spray no. painted on there and stuff. That's or, 2024. You know, it says free Wi-Fi. It says free Wi-Fi. You know, it's 2024. Or, or to get, a... get tea, it says free ammo. You know, I'm like, free I'm ammo. In. I'm in. <laughs> you know, but uh, he rolls up, he rolls the window down. I was like, hey, what you, what do you, what do you, what do you need, man? He's like, yo, I'm here, blah, blah. And I got a crack house monkey and a porcupine. I'm going to see Chris Weatherman. I'm like, what? He's like, <laughs> yes, my crack house monkey and porcupine. I said, Proceed. Come on in. What are you going to tell me? I said, I don't know what. Whatever, man. Go knock yourself out. (laughs) Proceed. As you were, good sir. Yeah. Have a good evening. I said, I got to know what red flags. You know, what what waves that red flag for you? Because if a crack house monkey and a porcupine doesn't do it, like, There's not a lot. I mean, it's a, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty, um, what do you say about our bee? It's a very diverse. This is a diverse. Um, I mean, it, it yeah. is. I mean, when we no, say no, we are the most diverse, we are. We got the we got every aspect of of yeah. self of, yeah self reliance that you could possibly get and game and crack house monkeys and working on yeah hey yeah you cover know, all I mean, the bases. I'm here for it. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. It's never boring. It trust me. Like never uh, boring. mountain mountain readiness is a great time. Any of the expos too, but we love mountain readiness because that was ours. But but it's just so fun. It's the to me the best times are the evenings at the, after the <laughs> yeah. show for the day it, when everybody's gathering up. Like we're gonna have some fantastic uh, women bushcrafters at mountain readiness that you can meet them too. And, and, and Jack's and did mama Wendy coming back T is she going to be there? Not sure. Not sure. Uh, of not course, sure. Jack's Janega. Um, yep. yeah, Jack's Jack's be there. Janega, we, uh, she's, uh, then we've got, um, Oh, um, Haley Richardson, the Honeystead will be there. Um, we've got, we've got quite a few Wanda, Wanda Friday will be there. Yeah, she's yeah, doing yeah. a bunch of classes. Yeah. Actually, I'm pretty psyched. She's going to be doing a, uh, a gold panning class right there in the creek doing the sleuth sleuth message sleuth method oh, really? whatever it is i'm gonna yeah, jump in on that myself it. hell i need to i should bring my sluice i've got a sluice uh yeah, when i lived in north carolina when i lived nice. in north carolina we were on wilson creek and uh that's where me and little bit spent most of our days was down there in that oh. creek running that sluice awesome. man hey that's, well, we're that's gonna fun. do it there in that creek out behind uh behind the uh the arena yeah, so, well, I'll bring, bring, I'll bring my along. sluice. I will, because sure. I'll leave it with you up there, dude. You can take it and play with it. It's a nice one too. It's a real good sluice. And I go out here in the spring every morning, and just hoping to look down and see that big old nugget set there. I'm like, one day. Well, I'm I've got a buddy that has a uh, what's called a high banker. I should see if I can get that from him and bring it up there because you can set that up on your place, and then what you do is you go around and take samples of dirt and you run and you just dump it in, and right. you leave it. It does it all itself. And you come back and you look at that trap and see if there's anything there. And then that that's the kind of gold. Can... Yeah, that's kind of gold panning I'm about. Like, here, let's hand this for me. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> well, you still have to pan it out, but it'll remove most of the stuff and get you down to just black sand primarily and then gold. And you'll have to pan out the black sand and I want to collect the gold. But but it's a way you can, cool. test, you can test spots to see. Right. If there's some some uh, product there, and it was a lot of fun, like that that kind of stuff of going out, and I, and I guess it's part of the like my personality of going out and finding gold like that, pulling it out of the ground myself. You know, it's like yeah, I went. It's like hunting. It's the same thing. We're we're going out and and trying to to you know locate and collect the resources that we need directly right. from the land, and you know, sadly there's too many people on this planet. Everybody can't do that these days um, because it would just, you know, they dry clean the face of the earth. There would right. be nothing left. You know, there, there's this war on <laughs> ranching and farming, but there's also a war on hunting at the same time. And it's like, and then now they're coming after private gardening. It's like, oh, what yeah. do you want us to eat? You know, oh, the bugs. I forget we're supposed to eat the bugs, but um, <laughs> you, you gotta, it, that kind of stuff starts making me nervous when you see it essentially it's a war on food right now you know i was gonna say it's almost like a war on being self-reliant that's that's kind of how i see it 
they definitely the don't want that. They definitely yeah. don't want that. So that's a big threat to them. And speaking of self-reliance, folks, we've got some shows coming up. Uh, the first one um, will be the Bushcraft Homesteading and Preparedness Expo uh, in Lindman, Kentucky, March 15th to 17th. And then the follow weekend is the Kentucky Sustainable Living Homestead in Bowling Green. So we will be at both of those. Um, and then in April, we will be at the SRF in Camden, Tennessee, the Self-Reliance Festival. So we will be at those three that are coming up here pretty quick. And then, of course, we'll have Mountain Readiness um, in May. And I think that's it that's planned at the moment. So, do you, Jenny, do you ever get down to uh, Georgia Bushcraft? You ever had to I go down did. there? did. Yep, you? yep. Okay. So uh, I went down there this past fall, uh, and I'm planning on going back uh, this fall. So mm -hmm. I'll be I'll be down there. Cool. Uh, and I might be teaching. So, oh, really? Uh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm well, we, we, I'm going to try to make the fall gathering okay. this time because uh, they just did the co-op here, but I was otherwise engaged and I couldn't make it to the co-op. But yeah, yeah, but I'll no, try to get I, down like, I like the fall gathering. It's always a really yeah. good time. Yeah. The, the anything that they do up there at uh, Georgia Bushcraft is usually a pretty good time. It's usually really good folks. I got some really good buddies there that that's the only place I get to see them. So okay. uh, I like to try to get by there whenever I can. You know. Gotcha. So where can folks find you, Trinity? How can they follow your your hunting exploits and find your gear? And uh, what do you want them to what do you want them to know before we get out of here today? So they can find me on uh, Facebook or Instagram. It's Made Ready Gear. I've also got an Etsy store, and again, that's under Made Ready Gear. Uh, I think what I would like people to know is that I'm no different than them. Not, you know, not really. I'm just a down home girl that loves gear, loves making quality products. And I would really appreciate them supporting small business and a like-minded fellow outdoor enthusiast. <laughs> well, I, I, you are, you, you are like all of us, but you're also a little bit different in that you are a young woman who's really into hunting and that's fantastic. You know, the number of hunters in this country has been shrinking. Um, there's obviously the fight against hunting in general. Um, so yep. it's really awesome to see a young woman like you who's who's this into it. Like it's hunting's your passion, obviously, because you guys have businesses that go off into this as well. So it yep. is a lifestyle to you. And like I said, it's fantastic to see that because it does give you a perspective most people don't have as far as what getting food looks like. You yes. know, <laughs> your, yeah. your food doesn't come wrapped in cellophane. Your food comes wrapped in hide and uh, you got to get that off of there. <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, and I, I did forget to mention, uh, I do have a YouTube channel. It's uh, oh. Saner Survival. And I've actually got, uh, I recorded my hound hunt up in Maine last year. So that's actually on my channel if people are interested. Oh, so, nice. There you go. Check it yeah, out. Cool. So check out the YouTube. Saner Survival. So, yep. and there's the link to the store. You guys can jump in there and grab some kit bags. She's got some awesome looking stuff in there. Yep. Um, T, you got anything uh, you want to close out with today, man? Oh man, just glad to be here as always, Trinity. Thanks for coming on. I'm glad we we connected there. And Me too. Uh, you answered. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you answered my me. my messenger message there and all that stuff. A lot of times people are like, who is this weirdo sending me messages? That <laughs> Nowhere, you know. No, it's it's awesome what you're doing, and you are, you know, just like everybody else. But like, like Chris said, um, you're doing something that's uh, a little more unique and out of the yeah. out of the ordinary of the box, which is cool. Um, and so I love seeing stuff like what you're doing. Um, I can't wait to meet you, and and hopefully you can, uh, you know, get with a lot of the people that we got there and share your stories and spread that love of hunting and and making quality gear. Um, you know, that's what, what we, we strive for with mountain readiness is people coming together and networking. You know, that's, that's our number one goal. It's not just training. It's not anything. It's about coming together with fellow like-minded people and enjoying each other's time and learning from each other. So we're really looking forward to seeing you out there. Thank you. I'm really excited to be there. Thank you for the opportunity and for the opportunity of being on today. I, Oh, thrilled. absolutely. We'll, we'll get you on again. I, Cause I just had an idea. It's Trinity. And, and, uh, when I see you in May, we'll, we'll talk about this and work it out. I want to, okay. I want to see if, 
if this fall, if there's a way we could work out to get you to take Mel, my wife, hunting for her first time. Okay. Uh, to bag a deer. And uh, okay. we'll, we'll see if we can work that out. I think right. it'd be cool. And he brings you camera gear and we'll film it. We'll film it. It'll be yeah. awesome. Sweet. It would be so good. Don't you make sure you know, I want to really understand. So I want big bites of the liver, fresh out, you know, or hard, whatever it is. <laughs> Blood Blood up. Yeah, we got her up. Yeah, we got She'd yeah. slap. I, if I reached for her, she'd slap the shit out of my hand. She'd, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Nah, that ain't happening. <laughs> nah, that ain't yeah. happening. Well, Trinity, <laughs> thanks for being here, guys. Uh, you know what we got coming up on the schedule. We are headed home to Florida tomorrow. So you guys know the drill. Be good. Be good at it. We will catch you next time. Here we go.